Hey guys, uh, you know, we've been going through a lot with a lot of problems that we've been having here in this neighborhood, but uh, hopefully we should hear back. Uh, my wife said it was 24 hours, but she, you know, she she's Lucy Ricardo. If you go look, I love Lucy. I'm actually married to Lucy Ricardo. Uh, for those of you that don't know about I Love Lucy, just punch in I Love Lucy on YouTube, and Lucy is my wife. Uh, well, that, a cross between that, and if you punch in all in the family, Edith Bunker. But uh, I say that in jest, but with partial seriousness to it. So probably going to find out something at some point tomorrow, I would suppose. I'm not sure if tomorrow's the 24 hour or the 48 hour to getting up out of here. But uh, anyway, I want to tell you, problems start resolving themselves and you got to be careful in life because when you're messing with others that are trying to succeed and working terribly hard going up a ladder uh, others come forward and start wanting to help you and uh, folks look fanboys as they call them folks don't 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 go down messing with kids that are working hours every day trying to uh, win amateur champions or pro boxing teams or MMA uh, you're barking up the wrong tree and I'm finding that uh, these people come forward and start bashing people the hell up that are messing with old men in the community and younger boys in the community uh, so God bless the boxing and the MMA community worldwide worldwide uh, People will come to your defense from all corners, and uh, the hunters become the hunted. Uh, they become the fearful very, very quickly, and that's happened in this situation. So, uh, I want to move on to something very funny. Um, back, not last May, but... Uh, trying to make sure I got this right. Back last late March or early April, Joe's sparring with a guy in a place called Ocana, Columbia. And well, he lets go of that right, bam, and it knocks the guy out. Well, unbeknownst to me, Joe, you looking up that song? Me? Joe kept t t well the boy got knocked out and this is the beauty about getting knocked out if you're not being pummeled to death and you just bam get struck right and it just puts you to sleep for seconds you wake up and you think it's eternity uh, and it's not a very very severe knockout it's the most pleasant way to lose actually so at any rate I got Joe standing here but uh the, the boy the boy came too I mean we're all running over there and especially me uh, like hey you okay you okay and I'm just lightly pecking on him like this you know I don't want to move his neck you don't know what's going on uh, well I mean I kind of did and when the boy came too I knew he's hey what's everybody doing standing around me right and he's saying this in Spanish so I don't really understand what he's saying and he's like What's going on? Why is every why are y'all singing me this song? It's beautiful. And then when he gets up and gets his bang straight about it, he starts telling Joe and everybody else, he said, I heard that off that movie. It's an American movie and uh and Joe says, Well he heard it off of some news show, a news movie, and I'm like, What the hell kind of music could that be? So anyway, we're, we're hearing, the, the boy told Joe some of the words, and it was about rockets and all, 
and Joe, <laughs> me and Joe were sitting down and we're watching this movie. This has been a while back that I found out, but I figured I'd share the story. We're actually watching the movie, The Anchorman, and when they go into that skit, uh, Skyrockets and the Light, Afternoon Delight is the name of the song. That's the song that boy was hearing, and when he come to, he thought we were all singing it to him. He's like, why'd you stop singing me this beautiful, this is a nice song. Why'd you... This is wonderful. <laughs> so you never know what you're going to get or what you're going to wake up from. And sometimes it's very pleasant. And uh, that fella just got right up. He's like, no, I'm, a, I'm fine. I can't remember anything other than this song. So I'm going, Joe's got the song. He looked it up on his phone. But we didn't find out till way later. <laughs> So that was the song. Thank you, Joe. That was the song that the boy that the boy was waking up to. So. If you hang around boxing long enough or you box long enough, crazy mess is going to happen to you and, uh, I was going to say and or, but crazy stuff's going to happen to you and crazy stuff's going to happen to those around you that are uh, in competition or sparring hard and heavy uh, at times, so... They were hard sparring, and I don't really. Uh, Joe was hard sparring with a very a guy that won the nationals, the whole enchilada in Venezuela, and that guy beat the hell out of Joe two or three times a week. Uh, but sometimes that they'd, they'd spar hard twice a week. Sometimes they'd spar hard three times a week. One some weeks they'd go soft one time. So, Joe just literally got up, got beat up the first couple of months, and uh, I told the boy to look him up, and uh, I mean, that's what it's about, but uh, not to, you know, hey, go for a knockout on him, no, nothing like that, but I meant hit, hit hard and spar hard, and uh, I believe you really need to be sparring hard at times, especially when you're getting ready uh you need to have a time before competition, then go through a light sparring phase right up to it. Make sure you don't get cut or things like that. It's not really a problem in amateur boxing, but in professional boxing, it, you got to really start watching, watching that. But uh, that's our funniest boxing story. Uh, I was knocked out one time and. Uh, I woke up and uh, when I immediately first opened my eyes, everybody was talking to me and I couldn't see nobody. It was just like black. And uh, I'm sure a portion of, that's what I believe happened. I'm sure a portion of that was, uh, I probably had my eyes closed and was hearing everybody while I was knocked out. But uh, to me, it was like I open my eyes and then all of a sudden you know I, I wasn't seeing people but I the people around me but I was hearing them and then boom I could see and uh, that wasn't that bad either it was scary when I woke up the thought of it's very scary and it should be very scary and you young guys shouldn't be pounding the heck out of each other constantly it's just not good for the brain uh, you just, you know, so there's a degree of what you should do and what you shouldn't. And you need to talk to your boxing coach or your trainer about these things. And hopefully you got a good ones, good set of people around you uh, that, that are not going to be insistent that you beat the crap out of each other every day. Uh, Joe, we went a different route with Joe at the beginning uh, where he was just constantly getting beat up and... Uh, 
I am so proud of that um, and, and that he got through it and we're, we're at the point now we can't find people to spar with him and uh, most of the people even just throughout Columbia know that we got burned in the gym uh, a few months ago three or four months ago back in February I believe it was and uh, everybody's like I don't want to be the payback you know I don't want to be that boy's payback and uh, we, we've got about eight gyms around here and nobody you know I even called a place on the phone just get some men to spar and they're like yeah it's fine we'll do that we'll be happy to do that and then and I like well you know uh, I'm the gringo with the boy Joe I know no uh, actually we we do spar but uh, we only very lightly spar so he's welcome you're welcome to pay and come down here and join the gym and spar real light you know you know we pity pat we don't really hit each other you know it turns into that so uh, as soon as they figure out who we are and then you ask other boys that are in the gym he's like yeah we're in there there's folks in there sparring hard every day every day and i'm like oh man come on so that's about that we're at the point right now um we're still gonna gear up uh i'm gonna take him up to cartagena and take him to bogota uh single single matches not not tournaments and we're just gonna take our time uh, a lot of folks don't get that and don't understand that but uh right now I'm just, we're just taking our sweet time uh honing everything we can hone i believe tonight i may put up a video joe does do uh some weightlifting, but what he does is he works with dumbbells once or twice a week we go through a series of exercises just keeping the dumbbells in the hands just go from one exercise to the other and uh, we try to fill up three minutes of just keeping those arms or back or shoulders going the whole time. And that that has been tremendously helpful to Joe. But now as far as just, you know, bench pressing and uh, normal squatting and things like that, we just, I choose for him not to do. Uh, I feel like that'll slow him down and it'll build slower uh, cell muscle than doing what he what he does and um, um, so with what we try to do with the with the weight work that, that he does the limited weight work uh, of course he does calisthenics uh, he's doing two to six hundred push-ups every day not at one time now boys uh, and I want to tell you young guys that uh, maybe you can't do 20 push-ups. Don't let that deter you. Use your brain. Uh, if you're at school, you, you, you get a chance. Get down and do five if that's all you can do. And if all you can do is five, do a whole bunch of times. Do five at different times through the day. And you'll get 100 push-ups by the end of the day. See? And you'll build up where you can do 50 or 100 push-ups at one time, uh, like Joe's built up to. So, uh, nothing that that he started to do, nor me, many, 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 many years ago, uh, came easy. You know, you jump the rope, you maybe you jump it twice and it, you hang up. It hangs up on your feet and... Uh, you just got to keep stabbing at it, little increments at a time, boys, little in increments at a time. Uh, and before you know it, you know, if you try to jump rope, uh, let's say you got Friday, Saturday, or Saturday and Sunday free, make 30 attempts to jump rope and give yourself five attempts at it. And what will happen is, and then... 
uh, during the week after school, maybe have four attempts at it or three attempts at it. And what's going to end up happening is you're going to be rocking and rolling with the jump rope. You just got to take that beginning time to get the hang of something. Same thing with a speed bag. A lot of these younger uh, trainers and boxing coaches, they don't believe in a speed bag. They believe in hooking a speed bag and doing some other speed bag drills, but the steady flow they don't believe in. I do. And boys, you need, you should be doing that. If there's a, you got a speed bag at the house or one at the gym, uh, get on that speed bag and get on it old school style, conventionally. Uh, and it might take you a while, but just keep plugging at it every time. And before you know it, you'll get a rhythm and it'll start flowing with you. And you'll be doing five minutes in a row. Uh, just da 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 and, uh, uh, and with the com do, uh, practicing conventionally on the speed bag, let me tell you what it works. It works fast twitching muscles timing and speed and it it will build your shoulders up where you can keep your arms up longer this is why all these guys today start out in round one like this and by round three they're down here and staying away from each other or just grabbing hold of each other uh, is for lack of exercise and, and drills uh, on equipment that we used back in the day. So uh, keep your mind open to some of these older things because a lot of these older things are tried and true uh, and can be of great benefit to you. And uh, I just wanted to throw the funny story in there and then I got off on the rant here. But uh, when Joe and I sat down, I had watched this movie, year, however many years ago it was. Uh, and uh, it, I sat down again and watched it with Joe. And uh, it, Joe was like, that's the song. That is the song. This is the movie. It wasn't the uh, news. It was a news movie. But uh, Joe kept saying, the newsman. And I, we could put two and two together. Our, our news movie and uh, it was the anchor man so that was really funny that that boy he must have recently had seen that and it just went in his brain and came up to the front for him and I just thought that was no disrespect to the boy none whatsoever and uh, Joe's been put on the mat too so and I have too so it's not in a disrespectful way uh, to anybody uh, you hang out in this sport long enough and you're going to get tagged and you're going down. Uh, uh, everybody does. And if they don't in a match, they, they it'll happen and it happened to Ali in sparring uh, more than once. So it happens to everybody. Uh, so uh, anyway, I just wanted to tell that story because that's the funniest boxing thing that I can really think of here recently. Uh, probably some more funny stuff has happened to me in my past and I just failed to recall, but uh, which is uh, normal for me to fail to recall, but uh, I wanted to tell you guys that story. I, we, and Joe was like, Daddy, that's it. That's it. And we both just cracked up laughing at the funniest thing, so. But no disrespect intended because uh, you'll see guys wake up and they'll be on Mars for a few seconds. So, uh, you know, uh, I remember when I was younger, the boy thought he was at the dinner table eating. He's like, well, where's my mom? She just handed me the Salisbury steak. I'm like, what the hell? You what? what? <laughs> so, you know, uh it happens, and it's funny, uh, but it's it's something you don't look forward to, and really something you don't want to want to see happening a lot. But uh, 
uh, it does have its hilariousness about it. So, God bless everybody. Move forward. Start praying for what God wants for you more than what you think you want because I'm finding as an old man that the more I'm giving thanks instead of asking for stuff, the better my life seems to get. Uh, I don't know if that's through acceptance or uh, you know all this psychological stuff I don't know much about. I just call things in black and white straight down the line. But uh, uh, we got a truck turning around outside, so it's making some noise. But uh, try to ask God for what what is good for you. What would be good for you? Uh, what what uh, that His will be done. Try as best you can, and especially through all the crazy. But I've just experienced some crazy. But try to remember, uh, this world does not revolve around us. It does not revolve around you nor I. And we have to think in the big picture of things. And uh, we need to start gearing back as a world society in a want to please God instead of a more so, instead of a want for God to please us. See? That's called unselfishness. Hard to achieve. Uh, hard to stay in that unselfish mode. Uh, because we are a broken species. But uh, it doesn't mean we can't try to attain selfishness. So be kind to one another. Do the best you can. And may my Lord... Jesus Christ, the King of all the kings, who never owned a mule, I would hope that he'll bless you in some way to get you not what you need, or not what you want, but what you need. Bye, guys.